Hi, today we are going to paint in Photoshop. I have found one of my friends that I think would be really fun to paint. And as you viewed all of the tutorials in your homework and reading assignments uh, on painting, chapter 12 specifically, uh, there are a lot of different techniques you found about painting. And of course, a lot of that has to do with the kind of brush that you want. So first of all, let's look at brushes. Uh, I'm here in my brush, the paint brush, brush tool, that shortcut is B. As soon as I click on a tool, look up at your options bar, and I'll pick a tool that looks good. These basic brushes will work really well, um, so feel free to use those. A lot of students do like them, so that, that would be a good choice. And also, some of these brushes that look like not a whole lot is going on, can give you beautiful results, uh, like the spat, uh, spatter brush. Um, some of these are chalk brushes, so they'll be sort of a dry, chalky look, rough look. And then you have some down here like the sponge brush, charcoal, more chalk, and then oil pastel. So the oil pastel will be sort of creamier um, than the chalk. And then in addition down here, you'll find the oil brushes. Here's oil heavy flow, dry edges, oil medium wet flow. I'm going to try those. The nice thing is if you don't like the brush, you can always change it and you can go back in history and start over. So just explore it. So I have that. Now I have this image of my friend and the other thing you can do is brighten up the colors. Uh, certainly you can even use your hue slider to change all of the colors. You could be painting her in blue, her face in blue, and, and so on. So, you know, feel free to explore color and don't feel limited by, you know, the natural color tones if you don't want to. Uh, this is your painting and I want you to express it the way that you want. Now, we have this, and, and don't forget that you can zoom in and out on the areas that you want to paint. The closer that you zoom in and paint, probably the more realistic of a result you're going to get uh, because you're in close and that'll give you realism or photorealism uh, in that respect. I honestly like sort of chunkier paint uh, smears, so I'll probably zoom in and out here and there and change the size of the brush. Remember to say, change the size of the brush, that is next to the, on your keyboard the letter P. The right bracket there will make your brush larger. The left bracket will make your brush smaller. And that gives you a lot of power in terms of the size of the brush that you want to paint. I'll take that down a little. Now here's the layer panel, and you've gone over that in your studies, but here we are looking at it. This is the background, which is the photograph of her. That's what you'll see when you open a pre-existing file, and that's what this is. Now, I want to create a transparent layer above that. And I want to do all of my painting on layers above the photograph. Do not paint on the background because you'll then be combining a painting and a photograph. And, and it's really just unusual. You really don't see that a whole lot. So I'm going to create a layer. And there it is. To title a layer, just go ahead and get right on the text and kind of double click. I'm going to title this Painting Layer uh, Face. I might start there. Now I could do the entire painting, and by the way, when you get done typing this, just click in this kind of benign area next to the layer, and that, uh, that'll just get rid of the, the ability to type, type the title. You can use more than layers to build this, and some people do. They might start with a layer and just paint the background sort of area, then create another layer and work with uh, basic shapes and skin tone, create another layer and get more detailed as you move forward uh, in your layer. So as you move you know, forward, because the top layers, remember, are in the foreground, and the bottom layers in your layer panel are in the background. But you can do the entire painting on just one layer. I'm going to zoom in on her face and I have the navigator panel out. This came from the window menu right here. So I'm going to use that mount and just click in a little closer so that I can see her face. 
Now I'm coming up and zooming in on her face to take a look at it. And this is just one way to work. We're going to begin with the paintbrush. So I've got my paint, uh, paintbrush. I'm going to make it a little smaller with that left bracket. And here's the little trick that's fun. Uh, again, you've got your brushes. And I'm going to work with full opacity, 100% opacity right here, and also a flow whoop, of 100%. Now here's the little trick, if you want to, uh, you can just option and holding down the option you'll immediately get the eyedropper and this is your eyedropper. And I'm just going to be, I'm going to option and click. This will give you the color that you option clicked on right here. And we'll look at the eyedropper more in a minute. And then you can just begin painting. Make sure again that you're on the transparent layer here. You can check this too if you want to see this. Just turn your background eyeball off. You can see how that's the first paint stroke. But I'm actually working on just this layer above. Now I've got that first stroke and I like to vary the color a lot so that, you know, just like in grass, there are so many colors in grass and it's, the grass isn't just green, so to speak. So I like to come in and option click again and option again and continue to option click and then paint a stroke option click painting a stroke sometimes vary your brush I'll get the little smaller when I need detail option click paint you know and you can reuse you don't have to always you know do only one paint stroke I'm gonna undo that last one and that's what's fun is if you don't like what you did, just undo it. Um, I use the, the, when I do this, I usually use Command Z or Control Z on the, on the PC. But whatever's comfortable. Option click. And that'll give you some variables. Now this takes time. Obviously, if you use a larger brush, it doesn't, but you may not like the result. And this is not about rushing. Uh, if you rush, I don't think you'll feel as satisfied with the end result. So make sure that you pick somebody that you want to paint and you want to spend some time working on uh, so that your project's meaningful to you. So I'm just painting. And the other thing, too, is if I look at this right now, I might be not super happy with it just because you've got to keep going. Uh, that's one of the biggest things is that if you first don't like what you have, a lot of that means that you just need to keep working on it. Now, I am taking the eyeball off the background. I don't want to change my layers in the sense that I am targeting this layer, but if you turn the eyeball off, it just takes the visibility off of, in this case, the photograph. And I'm looking and showing you what we have so far. And that's what I mean is you don't want to feel that oh my gosh, I don't know how this is going. Uh, it looks kind of strange right now. Don't worry about it. If you keep painting uh, and you finish everything, you'll find that you get somewhere you know, in a lovely way. So I'm just going to option click, continue painting. And that's basically what you want to do for your assignment. Option click. Now a couple things. The eyedropper above here, if you just want to actually click on that tool, gives you a sample size. And just to let you know, you can sample the exact pixel, which might be a little strange. You might get like a bright blue one without realizing it. Or you can average. And that'll average like an 11, 11 pixel radius. So you can get sort of an average. And I, th I find that can be a little bit helpful. Whoops. Come back to the paintbrush and work. And again, if you don't like it, you can always change it. Um, the other thing, too, is if you want to blend between two tones, like I've got sort of a darker tone here and a lighter value, feel free to turn that opacity down and explore what that does. Because if you paint over another region, it'll kind of mix between the two. You can see that here a little bit. Now, I'm not attached to this. I'm not sure I love it yet, but I just keep going. And that's 
best thing I can say is don't be attached to the result because it'll hinder your, your process and it won't be as fun. Just don't worry if you have a disaster, really. I don't worry about that. I just want to learn. The best thing is just learning from this. Okay, so this is just one way to go. Keep going. Now I want to show you some other tools also that you might want to play with or not. It uh, depends on the end result or the end goal. But a couple things. I'm going to turn off the, the, the eyeball on the background just so that we can see what we have so far. You can see here is where we turn down the opacity. And I'm not as wild about that, so I'm going to make sure in the future I get that turned up. But I want to show you some other tools that we work with. And I'm just looking here. You'll see the sort of, this is the blur tool. Some people like to blur their paint, but I really like the texture. Blurring will just sort of dissolve a lot of the texture that you see. But you could try it because you can always undo it. Um, and the smudge tool is just a great tool sometimes for the blending. Um, and you'll either like it or you won't, but of course you can smudge and blend. Let's look at the options bar. So again, if you're smudging pixels and you want them to blend, you might consider some of these softer brushes, but you could also you know, just explore a variety of these uh, brushes. I'll begin with a soft brush. Now, at 100% strength, you are really going to move your, let me show you, you're going to really move these pixels like, oh my gosh, uh, pretty, pretty extreme. You're going to undo that. And that's why this is set to 50%. But certainly feel free to play with whatever amount you think looks good. I'm at 48%. And you can blend. And I'm just going to show you. Let me zoom in a little bit so we really see it. Get the smudge tool. And this is just blending. So this is where, you know, if you want to blend these, they just feel a little more mixed in and less isolated in terms of the colors. This is the idea, and it really can work nicely. You see it's starting to blend and work for you. And so on. So <clears throat> you can do that now. You can do that later. I'll probably get a little more painting done and come back to that, but I just want to show you how to blend your tones. Turn back on the photograph. And this is a lot more blended than it was before. Um, now, you, when you're zoomed in, you see these little white, uh, the white grid that happens so that you can see the little encapsulated pixels. You know, if you don't want to see that, and sometimes I don't, uh, under your view menu, this is in show. And that's a pixel grid outlining each pixel. And I'm just going to take that off just so that you can see how to get rid of it. If you see how you kind of need to get rid of it when you want to see a little closer. Now the other thing I wanted to also point out in this moment is that let's say I want her eye to be a little bluer. Uh, make sure you click on the photo layer because that's the, where the eyeball lives at this moment. And I might click on then on the background and here is your tool for individual saturation. Uh, we looked at image adjustments and hue saturation, but this allows you to come in with the brush, which I'm going to shrink down with that left bracket, and uh, saturate. Now, before I begin, of course, you want to look up in your option bar because, whoops, we would be desaturating her eye, and that would take it to grayscale. So I'm going to click on saturate and move in here. And I'm not going to go crazy. I don't want her eye to be overdone. And you might not even like that. You can just sort of make a decision. Uh, but I'm just going to play a little with color here and saturate at least the pupil. Yeah, and when you zoom in, you find some of this is a little hard to tell <clears throat> exactly what you want. I'm just going to do a little of that. And then space bar to move over because I don't want to forget the other eye. And that space bar is wonderful because it works with a variety of your tools in the toolbox, uh, really any of them. So I'm just popping that in. Now, you could also dodge. Dodge will uh, lighten specific areas. Sometimes it looks good and sometimes it doesn't. And just watch where I'm going here. Whoops. 
right here where that sponge tool is, is your dodge tool. And it's the first